Hi, this is Trisha Cottrell, and today I wanted to talk about moment of peace. What made me think about this is, <laughs> I know I said earlier today on the other video, and I'm wearing the same outfit. I just had to put some pins in different places and stuff like that. And I was going to change my shirt and just pretend like this is a different video, but this all happened in the same day. So I was listening to the sermon and just going around the house doing different things, and I felt peace. And usually, not usually, but there are times like when I'm dealing with trials and tribulations in my life where I'm going through a storm and it really does feel like it's no peace. It feels like it's hectic. It feels like I can't catch my breath. It feels like so many diff different things are happening. I thought that was my phone. <laughs> it feels like so many different things are happening. It's hard to catch your breath. It's hard to just be able to just be. And while I was sitting in that moment of peace, I could hear God saying that you need to prepare while you're in this, this moment of peace. And sometimes I think we forget that a storm is coming. And when I say prepare, I don't mean always constantly be seeking the next storm. Don't just act like, oh, no, this couldn't possibly be a blessing. Like, enjoy the blessings that God's giving you in your life. Make sure that you are doing all the things that you need to do. Make sure that you are, if something good is happening, enjoy the good thing that's happening. But don't be so, like, I get into these moments of my life where I feel like, oh, I just don't feel like doing anything at this very moment. And most of the time I'm constantly going, so that's very rare. But when I get like that, Usually that's when the adversary will try to start attacking you. He will slowly start to either show you images on TV or he'll put you in a group of people who are not good for you or introduce people into your life who shouldn't be there. Or he will make something seem so enticing because you are, you feel like you're strong enough because nothing's happening around you. But Satan will take little things all around you little by little like it'll be that one person that you meet it'll be that person that you get introduced to it'll be that friend group that you're in it'll be the tv show the music the the movies the whatever it is he will little by little take those things and then come for a personal attack against you and you won't see it coming because you beat all the small battles. You feel like you beat them. You feel like you're strong enough to be alone with this person. You feel like you're strong enough to, I don't want to say the name of that, and chill. And you feel like you're strong enough to be vulnerable in this vulnerable situation where it's secluded. Or you feel, you feel content in an area of your life like you feel like you could be around certain people who don't mean you any good you feel like you can hang out with this old friend who brings out the worst in you and you you still have stood your ground you still are the same person that you've always been or the person that you are becoming but because you have one in that one area it makes you it gives you a false sense of confidence to where you feel as if you can be in that situation long term it might be okay to have one conversation with that person, just like a high buy scenario, something like that. But usually when you introduce yourself into a scenario, into some kind of thing in your life that's not good for you at all, that you know is not good for you, the more you're around it, the weaker you'll become. And Satan knows that. He knows that you are going to be oblivious, that you're going to think, I can completely handle this. Uh, this is nothing because it's going to feel like it's easy, like it's an easy win. But little do you know, slowly it's deteriorating your spirit. Slowly it's, it's dissipating you. And slowly it is it's attacking and weakening main vessels within you. And your main stream of spirit is it is penetrating them. It is piercing them. It's like a, a slow leak in a vow. A slow leak in, in a break line is exactly what Satan's doing when he's attacking you. You don't know that you have been affected at all. You don't know that your car has been affected at all. You don't know anything's happening at all. It just seems like it's normal until one day something doesn't work in the vehicle. Until, until one day 
you know, something that is a major part of your vehicle no longer works or whatever else. Things like that happen when you least expect it. And it's it's not something that Satan just doesn't attack you all at once. He weakens other areas around you so that you can be in a position where you're most vulnerable and he will attack you then. So what God put on my heart to say is enjoy your blessings. Don't just go seeking for the next shoot, like waiting for the next shoe to drop or waiting for something bad to happen. Enjoy everything that God's giving you in your life. If he introduces a person into your life, enjoy them, respect them, honor them, whatever else. And I'm not saying you need to be like acting like a wife if you just met this person or anything like that, or a husband if you just met this person. I'm just saying that really, truly respect each other. Just do that. And <laughs> and when Satan comes and attacks you, be ready. And you're probably thinking, how can I be ready if I'm not constantly thinking about what's about to happen next? So the way that this is what spoke to my spirit, this is the way that you should go about preparing. Be in your word more. Be prayed up more. Be spending specific time with God. Because in that moment of peace is the moment where you need to be building the most strength. So when Satan comes and tries to attack you, you'll be ready. It won't be that you're looking for the other shoe to drop or waiting for something bad to happen in your life. It'll be pre intentional preparation. And sometimes when you are winning or you, you're in a false sense of winning, when Satan did a small attack and you won or something like that, it really gives you this false confidence where you feel like, oh, is that the best Satan has? When really that wasn't the attack. That was just a little dig. That was just something that Satan was using to slowly weaken you because he won't attack you all at once. He will do little things until he can try to break you. It could be, it could be a person. It could be a place. It could be a thing. It could be something happening little by little. Like for me, in my life, it was everything was peaceful. Everything was good. And while everything was good, I was like, okay, you know, I'm in, I was kind of enjoying it. Like I felt like I wanted to enjoy it, but I couldn't allow myself to enjoy the wins that I was having. And so I've been working constantly to be better at allowing myself to enjoy the wins that I have in my life because God wants me to be happy. He wants all of us to be happy and to have joy and peace in our lives. He he doesn't want us to have like a whole bunch of burdens and to constantly be worried about things all the time. That's not the type of life that he wants for us. He really wants us to be everything he created us to be. And <laughs> And for me, I really want to be intentional with enjoying my life, with enjoying everything that God gives me in my life and not feeling like all of a sudden things are going to be gone and I'm not going to be able to have anything anymore or, or you know, like <laughs> this is going to sound really crazy, but God would introduce certain people in my life and I would be like, this is too good to be true. Like there's no way God would feel like he could bless me with this. And God if God is willing to bless you with something, accept it. Don't just accept that everything is God. Use discernment. Make sure that, and when I say discernment, discernment is something that you use to figure out whether it's the adversary or whether it's God. And you could do this through fasting. You could do, do this through additional prayer and time with God. You could do this through having just that moment of silence where you are reflecting, spending time with God and he is really telling you and it, he could tell you through a family member, a friend. He could tell you through the Bible. It's different ways that he will speak to you to tell you exactly whether you're making the right decision or not. And in that moment, you have to be willing to listen. You can't just think, I want this thing, because no matter what God tells you after you decide that you want it, you will not be able to hear him because your thoughts will be will be bigger than what God is trying to tell you. And that's why it's so important before you jump into any situation, before you start a relationship, before you start a friendship, it's really important for you to ask God, is this person supposed to be in my life? 
and God will remove them if they need to be removed or he will keep them around if they should be around in your life. And sometimes we forget to ask for permission. We think that we just need to do things on our own and we need to figure everything out for ourselves. Now, also, the Hail Mary (laughs) is when you are going through a trial, a tribulation, a storm, when you feel like, okay, let's say you prepared, you've been praying, you've been In your word, you've been spending extra time with God. You've been fasting in this moment of peace because although you're enjoying the blessings that God's giving you, you understand that life is going to continue, that there will be a storm, that the adversary will try to attack you, especially if you have a purpose on your life that that is geared towards improving and and and. which is geared towards improving and helping other people. Things like that, the adversary will do a lot of different things to try to make you into something that you're not, to make you really feel like you don't deserve anything better, to make you really doubt yourself. He will use any opportunity he can in childhood and throughout your entire life to stop you from changing the world. And what you what you should do is focus on God. Keep working on yourself. No matter what it is, no matter how hard it is, make sure that you constantly focus on God. You constantly focus on doing what it is that's beneficial for the kingdom. Face everything head on. Don't allow Satan to scare you or to make you feel fear or to make you feel like you can't make it through this because you can. And he will always constantly tell you that you can't do something that God intended for your life because he's afraid. He's afraid that you're going to be in your full potential. He's afraid that you'll be walking in your purpose. And it's up to us to show him that he has no say so over our lives. Our lives. God is the, the author of my life. He is the creator of my life. He is everything to me. And so anything that the devil wants from me, the insecurity that he wants to try to make me feel, the jealousy that he wants to try to make me feel, the the doubt that he tries to give me when God blesses me with something. It's something that I can no longer allow him to have a hold on in my life. I can't give him an avenue to walk in and try to destroy me. I can't allow him to make me hurt someone who doesn't, who doesn't deserve it, even if they do deserve it. Hurting anyone is is definitely not my character. I don't want to even even people that hurt me in the past. I don't ever want to hurt anybody. I don't care what they've done to me. They could be the cruelest person I've ever met in my entire life who is always intentionally trying to hurt me or who will go out of their way to try to hurt me. And I still Satan, you can't use me. I will not allow you to turn me into someone who I'm not. You're not going to make me turn into a nasty human being who who goes out of their way to hurt people who are who are still God's children, regardless of how they feel like they need to uh, try to attack me. I honor myself. I respect myself. There is nothing that you could do that would make me feel like God isn't who he says he is. And it doesn't matter if I have a moment of insecurity or weakness or whatever else. I will call on God. And when you feel weak, after you're praying, after you're in your Bible, after you're spending time with God, call on Jehovah Sabah. That's the God who fights for you, who fights your battles, who, when you feel weak, he will be your strength in whatever war, storm, whatever it is that you're going through. He will be able to help you break those chains. He will help you in any way that he can. Anytime you call on his name and he feels like you're weak, he feels like you need strength. He will be your strength and your weakness. Don't ever feel like Satan has the upper hand because he doesn't. And in conclusion, when you have a moment of peace, strengthen your prayer life, strengthen your your relationship with God, strengthen, I mean, you need to be 
prayed up in your word all day, every day, whatever it is you got to do. It might feel like a moment of peace. You might feel like everything's fine. You don't have to worry about it. That's exactly where he wants you. He wants you to feel like everything's like you don't have anything to worry about, like which you don't have anything to worry about with God. He wants you to feel like you don't need the extra prayer or, you know what, I may skip reading the Bible today or something like that. He wants you to feel so content that you don't feel like you don't even realize you haven't read your Bible in a couple of days. You don't even realize that you missed one Sunday and then the next thing you know, it was a whole month. You won't even realize that Satan is already making his way in there because he knows that you're being weakened at this point. And I don't know if all Christians are like this or if it's just me, but the whenever I'm not in church, I am listening to a sermon, another sermon somewhere else. I'm listening to motivation somewhere else. I am using the U Bible app, which I'm not trying to like just promote things, but it really is helpful for people who are baby Christians or even who are in their walk like with God. It really does help you stay focused because it's like you read the Bible every single day. It's like 365 Bible and every day there's like a prayer. Every day there is something that you focus on or you can write like a little journal prompt that is about like, what is something that you're grateful for or something like that. So it helps you really stay focused on God and not on everything else that's going on. And sometimes you feel like, okay, well, I got this moment to myself. Let me go ahead and watch this show that I know it makes me real weak. Like if you know the show makes you weak, no matter how good the show is, you might have to cut it off. You might have to stop watching that show. And it's not going to be easy. Sometimes you're going to feel like, well, I feel strong enough in this moment. The next thing you know, you have that moment of weakness. And then right on time, the adversary will have your ex or someone else call you who was about that life, (laughs) who was about the streets or something like that. And the next thing you know, you are in sin. Adversary will look for any avenue where you are weak and you don't realize it's weakening your spirit to try to attack you. It's up to you to prepare while you are in your moment of peace. It's up to you to really focus on God, to zone in on God, to do the things that are beneficial for you. Keep working outside of your comfort zone. Keep getting uncomfortable in different areas of your life so that you can push yourself to the to where God is taking you. So you will be able to follow him with strength so that no matter what's happening, or what happened to you in your past, you'll be able to leave that behind. You, God will create a whole other steps for you to take. You don't need to take that same path that you used to take in the past. You can just follow God, follow his lead, and he will take you where you need to go. Don't ever feel like any show, any movie, any song, any music, any person, any place, anything is ever going to replace God in your life. Nothing will ever give you the peace that God gives you. Nothing. And if you get weak when you do certain things in your life, you need to remove it from your life. Because if you know you're weak, Satan knows you're weak. So you have to be smart about it. It's not going to always be easy. There are going to be people around you asking if you saw that show or, you know, whatever else. And you just have to say no, especially if you know that's your weakness, especially if you know that's something that you struggle with. You can't continue to put yourself in a vulnerable situation to be attacked. You have to really look out for yourself. Guard your heart at all costs. And I'm not saying you need to be cruel to people who are trying to get to know you, women or men. You know, it really it really is important for you to treat them with love and kindness to really be honor yourself and respect yourself keep your standards I'm not saying lower your standards just to have somebody in your life you can have standards and still respect someone else are they willing to respect you that's the question and no matter how good someone looks do not allow them to destroy your peace don't allow them to come in and make you make you a 
vessel for the devil. And I say it like that, and it sounds so cruel, you know, saying it out loud. But really, whenever you put yourself in a vulnerable, weak position, when you put yourself in temptation, when you know that's what you're going to need, when you know that something's wrong and you do it anyways, when you know that you shouldn't be talking to that person because they make you weak, when you know that you shouldn't be in a situation like that because they'll make you vulnerable, when you know that you shouldn't be watching or doing or talking to this person or that person or whatever else because they turn you into the person that you used to be that that moment is how the adversary will use you to show people what Christ really isn't like the people who are on the fence will be looking to you you I have people that look to me not look to me like in a god way but look to me like they'll see me trying to do the right thing and you know walking by faith and following God's lead and I don't even realize they're paying attention but people are always paying attention so you have to be aware of your actions what you're doing your little nephew and cousin for men like family members that you think don't aren't even paying attention to you are looking to you to lead them if you are about that God life and you really are trying to do the right thing, they need role models like that in their life. So they know they have a choice to say, no, they don't have to be out here, you know, exploiting their body. They don't have to be out here trying to get with all of these women. They could really just focus on loving themselves. They could really focus on being being a man, like being someone who will be able to lead because they're following God. And that's what we need more of. You could be the person that changes that. Men have so much power. They don't even understand. And if the adversary can get to the man, they can destroy. He can destroy the whole house, the whole world. And the sad thing is most men don't even know that they're, they're that powerful, that they really hold that much power, that if they're good, everything else will be good. Everything. I'm not saying there won't be some women who don't don't appreciate or deserve the people that they have. I'm saying that the real woman who does appreciate what she has, who really does appreciate you, respect you, honor you, who you honor and respect, honor and love, will, it will be unstoppable. And we really are the only thing standing in our way for women, too. We could have our standards and respect and honor ourselves. And part of me feels like as long as there's a woman weak enough to give in, to not respect herself, there will always be men willing to just take advantage of the situation. But for a few of us that really do want to do the right thing, that are trying to do the right thing, that no matter what your past is, I don't care what you did in the past. If this is what you want to do in the future, go for it. Don't don't let anybody tell you what you used to be because that that's irrelevant. We're here now. While you're moving forward, you really have a lot of power as well. You know, you can speak life into the man, into the people in your life, your family, your friends, everyone around you. And you will be amazed what they will show you that they're capable of. So. I don't want to like go too in deep in depth with that or anything else, but just really lean on God and stay in your word, stay prayed up, stay focused on God fast, whatever you have to do while you have that peace, while you have that stillness in your life, because that is when the adversary is formulating a plan to try to take you down. It could be you and your marriage, you and your relationship. It could be you and your friendships. It could be anything. It could be you at your job, whatever it is. Focus in on God in these moments. Enjoy your blessings. Do not allow him to make you paranoid or to make you feel like you can't appreciate the things that God blesses you with. Appreciate everything and get closer to God. Don't allow him to make you feel like, oh, well, you're blessed. So go ahead and just dip your toe in that temptation. Like, no, stay focused because this is the moment 
This is <laughs> this is a true test. And in order for you to prove that you're about that God life so God can trust you, he will want you to be obedient. He will want you to be a good leader. He will want you to really be able to step in your purpose. And in order to do that, you have to stay focused and you have to be prepared in your moment of peace. 